Hi, we're here today to sail with David Clements on his lovely looking Bowman 40. The Bowman 40 is a Chuck Payne design and she's built solidly and with a heavy displacement for crossing oceans and lots of blue water cruising. For this reason she has her weight very centrally placed in the boat so the engine is over the keel along with the tanks and the rig is stout and sturdy and relatively conservative which means she can stand up to a really good blow but in light airs she suffers a little bit although saying that this morning in only 11 knots of true wind we had a really good sail to windward and uh, we're happily making over six knots so uh, I think that's pretty impressive really for a heavy displacement yacht. Like all Bowman 40s, she has a cutter rig, which means she has a fairly high cut Yankee forward most and then a smaller staysail on the inner forestay. That means you've got a bit of a gearbox, which when the weather really blows up and you want to bring the center of effort closer to the middle of the boat, you can roll away the Yankee and put a few reefs in the main and just have the staysail up and still make good ground to windward. This particular boat is slightly unusual over normal Bowman 40s in that instead of having running backstays which normally come down to about here um, to stop the mast from pumping when you're going downwind this boat has a triatic diamond on the forward section of the mast which means that you don't need to use runners at all so that's one less thing to worry about every time you put a tack in. She's beautifully balanced. The steering is light throughout, although I haven't actually sailed her in anything above 15 knots, but she feels beautifully directionally stable as well sailing downwind. It's literally a two finger on the wheel job and uh, she goes where you point her. And likewise, the autopilot has no problem either, keeping her on a steady track. The cockpit is nice and easy to work at. The winches are within the helmsman's reach so he can trim the, the Yankee. The staysail is operated from the halyard winches up on the coach roof and there's plenty of room for the helmsman to walk back and forth and take a good look down the side decks. The foredeck on a cruising boat is one of the most important parts of the vessel. It's essential to have a bit of room to work up here and when you're retrieving the tackle. And also you need stout equipment and stout gear to make sure that it's pretty bulletproof even in a gale. Here we've got twin rollers so we can set two anchors if we need to. A good solid windlass which feeds the chain through a horse pipe and down into the anchor locker below. Sometimes that's convenient and it keeps the weight well low in the boat. Other times it can be a nuisance because it's difficult if a chain piles up. You have to run down below and flatten out the chain before you can feed any more in. The raised bullocks and the wide side decks make access really easy for it, even when a boat's being thrown around. These here will give you a good tow rest if she's really healed, so you can walk your way up almost sideways along the bullock. What it does mean is that the fair leads are captive they run actually through the bullocks which in some ways are very good because they don't pop out other ways it makes life a bit fiddly when you're trying to feed the warps in in a bit of a hurry one of the things i really like about this boat is the full length handholds that come right to the foredeck so in really bad seas you can crawl your way along just using the stainless solid handrails to get you up here safely the rig on this boat is good solid and straightforward she's got a solid fixed section mast and twin straight spreaders and the advantage of having straight spreaders means that you can put the boom right out when you're running downwind without danger of chafing the sail the stays are really thick and really solid and we have of course a full set we've got forward and aft lowers and continuous intermediate and cap stays which are as thick as the rest uh, she's 
Got a spinnaker pole, so she's fully rigged for uh, downwind sailing with a spinnaker, either symmetric or asymmetric. And all the furling lines run neatly on the inside of the bullocks, so there's no tripping hazards on the side decks. The tracks for the staysail are quite a way inboard, which means that she can be tightly sheeted, which improves the slot as well going to windward if you're using both heads, head saws. What made you choose this boat, a Bowman 40? Bit like me really built for comfort not for speed i had a rustler 36 before this which was a wonderful boat and i wanted something which had the same characteristics as the rustler in many ways being medium heavy displacement good in a sea comfortable boat to make a passage but also just had that little bit extra accommodation to make it more comfortable when cruising with four people over long distances and i've not been disappointed uh, i wanted a cutter rig as well because going up from the rustler, I didn't want to have any larger sails to handle than I was already handling. And uh, the cutter was an obvious choice. I looked at one or two others. I looked at the Victoria 38 and I looked at the Vancouver 38. But really, I felt the Bowman was a, a fantastic boat uh, and it's looked after me very well ever since. And what are the things you like best about her? Well, I think on deck for a start, Working on this boat is very easy because she's got a big, safe, deep cockpit and wonderful side decks. If you have to go on deck in a sea, it's very easy with plenty of handholds. You can go up forward uh, with comfort and there's always something to hang on to. She's got good jack stays. It's just an easy boat to work. It looks after you and it always feels safe, even if you're really in quite exposed conditions. Down below, whoa, I think I'd plump for the galley. It's got the most wonderfully designed galley. It's uh, easy to work in a sea. It's a sociable galley. You're part of the boat company when you're working it. Got a four burner cooker. Um, and uh, we treat food takes quite seriously on, on this boat uh, and uh, we can work well in the galley. The other thing I like very much, it's the general layout of the boat for living on at sea. You're never far from something to hold on to. There are lots of handholds around the boat. It's easy to move around and having two heads, one on the port side, one on the starboard side, means that you're always able to use the heads on either tack, which is a bonus if you're, again, a long distance at sea. She's just a good, comfortable, practical cruising boat. And is there anything particularly that you'd like to change about her? Not sure whether there's anything really I'd want to change about her now. Uh, she's not as close-winded as the Rustler was. The Rustler was a fantastically close-winded boat, but then I guess that's a function of a cutter rig. No, I don't think so. I think this boat, I, I keep thinking about changing her and then thinking really, well, what, what would I get that was going to be better than I've got for the money I've got invested in this boat? And I, I don't think there's anything really I'd want to change about her. I'm a very lucky man to say that, I suppose suits my lifestyle and my sailing style. So what type of sailing do you, uh, do you normally do and what are your favourite areas to cruise in? The first time I ever went solo in a boat was in a Dart 1 design on the Dart at the age of 11 and I just thought this is the most wonderful place and so I said to myself age 11 that if I'm ever lucky enough to have my own boat I'd like to keep it on the Dart please. I love the Dart to bits and as a cruising ground it's lovely. You can come out of the river, turn left and head round to Torbay, Tynmouth, Exmouth or points east. Come out and turn right and you go to Solcombe, Newton Ferrers, Plymouth, Foy. It's a great cruising ground but then I like to stretch the legs of the Bowman every other year and we've been to Scotland, we've been to the west coast of Ireland uh, and last year we took her down to Galicia uh, and she's marvellously cut out for that sort of sailing and she's never given me a moment's anxiety anywhere that we've been with her. So really I'm an out and out cruising man, I don't race um, and uh, not, I have raced in my time but uh, this boat is a real proper cruising boat and that's what I like to do with her.